actually just saw him in turn number. But he was talking to the professor. Oh no, he's going to talk to the wanders in. Yeah. I love him. I got a felon scope, that's why I was wondering. Yeah. We hired him. So we are group two. We did job analysis. I'm Justin. Uh, we have Jason, Lisa, Ryan, and Dylan. And uh, I know it's not the most exciting topic for some of you guys, but it's essential to all areas of human resources. So uh, just about ready to get started. All right, so job analysis, as we talked about, it's the DNA of HR. And uh, because it de determines the basis of recruiting, uh, evaluation, pay scales, and just about every aspect of this show. Great summary. Thank Sorry, you. go ahead. Thank you. That's exactly what I was looking for. Job analysis. <laughs> but go ahead, Justin. Job analysis is the observation <coughs> and or analysis of employees um, in order to determine the essential job functions. So the competency, competencies, conditions, and the importance of each task of the job. Um, gathering information to form a job summary is uh, you use the subject matters expert, which we talked about, and uh, we'll be covering that in more depth later. So later in the presentation, uh, one of my teammates is going to cover that. And uh, so a SME, they call it subject matter expert, is someone with bona fide expert knowledge about a particular job. So we have Captain Smear right here, which we all did posters on, and uh, captain of a ship. Uh, he would be a subject matter expert of uh, anything about ships, the sea, uh, or leading a crew, which is also very important for a uh, subject matter expert. And uh, using observation and questionnaire is uh, number two, with the job tasks and duties. Um, let's see, jobs essential tasks are recorded based on importance. So the more time you spend on a task or the more difficult a task is, uh, that can affect your, you on the pay scale. And some of the competencies um, are based on tasks and duties. So the knowledge, skills, and abilities that you'll need to perform those essential job functions, those are all under job analysis. So after those uh, competencies are established, um, how well the employee must perform these tasks is the next step in performance evaluation. So we call it goodness in this class, for lack of a better term. And uh, next one is legal protection. I think one of the most important ones. Excuse me. The four major purposes. Um, number one is legal protection. And uh, there's also recruitment and selection, um, guidelines for performance, pay scale, and they're all important and can affect the company's turnover rate. They also are great for a guideline for performance, so job analysis is essential, essential for that. Um, because job analysis sets the required competencies and skills, uh, it's also like a guideline for the model employee, so you know what the prototype or model employee is like based on that. And it also lets recruiters know uh, what type of person they should be looking for. So based on the, the knowledge, skills, and abilities you need to have, a um, recruiter will be looking for those, obviously. And uh, it's obviously essential for training as well. Then we have pay scale. Job analysis has a say in pay scale because uh, based on the job, it's based on the job evaluation. And the important, important importance of each position is decided and placed on the pay scale accordingly. Last one, which we actually talked about last week from Group One, is uh, protection against federal laws. Job analysis outlines the knowledge, skills, and abilities, like I said, that are required for the job. Some examples are the FLA, uh, for example, prove overtime is eligible. ADA, they also talked about to prove disabilities uh, can't be reasonably accommodated. Next, we have compensation is a big factor uh, that's affected from job analysis. 
So another aspect is, uh, is uh, compensation and the amount of compensation for an employee is based on the duties established in job analysis. And performance evaluation, which will also be covered later in the slides. Um, it's essential because the job evaluation is based on the task duties and competencies, based on how well an employee performs in the job. It can affect their standing on the pay scale. And, based, and because the criteria of a model employee is already set, during job analysis, it's easier to assess how well the employee performs. And then we have job specifications, which uh, Jason is going to cover next. And uh, we have, it's the reason job analysis is called DNA. It's because it outlines all the specifications, for example, what education, certifications, experience, language skills, physical abilities that are needed for the job. And there's about three different types um, that I know of. So number one is direct observation, where uh, you watch an employee while they work. And uh, number two is you talk to an employee and supervisor to discuss um, important aspects of the job. And who does job analysis? Job incumbents is number one. Um, they have firsthand experience, but may inflate the importance of each task. Supervisors, number two. Uh, Number three is the professionals. They have no incentive to inflate or deflate their duties, so it's the most accurate and objective. So a summary of everything, um, job analysis, it affects all areas of HR. Um, job summary, performance evaluation, recruitment selection, and compensation pay scales, and of course legal protection, one of the most important. All right, so all these will be covered later in the presentation. And uh, next up, Jason will be covering job description and specifications. Thank you, Justin. Mm -hmm. All right, now we're going to move on to um, job description and job specification. Just give it a minute here. All right, so um, both job description and job specification um, are essential parts of the job analysis information. Available job openings cannot be filled until and unless an HR manager has these two sets of data. It is necessary to define them accurately in order to fit the right person to the right job. And um, this helps both the employer and the employee understand what exactly needs to be delivered and how. Writing them clearly and accurately helps organization and workers cope with many challenges while working. Though preparing job description and job specification are not legal requirements, both play a vital role. And, um, in getting the desired outcome, it is very um, vital for both, and these data sets can help in determining the necessity, worth, and scope of a specific job. There is a specific difference between both, so first I'll begin with job description. Job description is a management tool that clarifies work functions and helping employees understand their jobs. It lists the tasks, duties, responsibilities, TDRs, that a job entails. And the main uh, purpose of a job description is to collect job related data in order to um, advertise for a particular job. It helps in attracting, targeting, recruiting, and selecting the right candidate for the right job. It is done to determine what needs to be delivered in a particular job. So yes, job description is essential. It, it clarifies what employees are supposed to do if selected for that particular job opening. It gives recruiting staff a clear view of what kind of candidate is required by a particular department or division to uh, perform a specific task or job. It also clarifies who will report to whom. All right, now um, job description continued. Performance evaluations are most often based on job descriptions, um, basis for determining appropriate level of um, how to get work done. So here's what Justin touched up on, performance appraisals and how they align with um, job descriptions as well. <coughs> All right, so when writing a job description, um, think of a job <coughs> description as a snapshot of a job. Uh, the job description needs to communicate clearly and concisely with what responsibilities and tasks, tasks um, the job entails and to indicate as well the key qualifications of the job, the basic requirements, specific credentials or skills, and if possible, the attributes that underlie superior performance. And here's an example of the job description. 
This one is a farm manager. As you can see, the areas of responsibility, day-to-day um, -day operations, responsibilities for health and comfort of livestock, and then um, enterprise and responsible for maintenance. So just all the specifications. And then uh, job specification continued, um, which is next states that minimum qualifications needed for successful performance. Um, it's also a list of knowledge, skills, abilities, and other characteristics, other rise known as uh, KSAOs, that an uh, individual must have to perform a job. And um, it also includes level experience, physical, emotional, technical, and communication skills required to perform a job. It also includes general health, mental health, intelligence, aptitude, memory, judgment skills, leadership skills, emotional ability, adaptability, flexibility, values and ethics, manners, and creativity. So is a candidate eligible for this position? Job specification helps candidates analyze whether they are eligible to apply for a particular job vacancy or not. It helps recruiting team of an organization understand what level of qualifications, qualities, and set of characteristics should be present in a candidate to perform him eligible for the job or not. And um, it also helps the most appropriate candidate for a particular job. And they get in, uh, detailed information about any job, including job responsibilities, desire, technical and physical skills, conversational ability, and much more. Job description um, and job specification are two integral parts of job analysis. They're really the core. And um, they also define job fully and guide both employer and employee on how to go about the whole process of recruitment and selection. And um, both data sets are really important, as I mentioned probably five times already. Um, they're extremely relevant for creating a right fit between job and talent and the value of performance, analyze training needs, and measuring the worth of a particular job. It's all about the matching. Great. And here's a, you know overview. Um, job specification, qualifications, experience, training, skills, responsibilities, emotional characteristics, sensory demands, and then job description is the other side of it, which is job title, job location, job summary, reporting to working conditions, um, job duties, machines to be used, and hazards on the job. And here's another example of job description. Uh, they all vary depending on the uh, type of work. So this one, uh, qualifications, duties, and salary, it's all generic. So um, every company, every position has their own template of these. And then I'm going to show you another example of one. This one is for the casual sales assistant position at uh, retail services. Main duties, responsibilities, key working relationships, hours of work, and duration of contract. And then the job purpose, reporting to, and then department. And then um, that's it. And uh, next, Lisa will be explaining the methods of collecting data. Okay, so I'm going to be focusing on the methods of collecting data. So job analysis is based on job data, hence why um, the data collection is such an important first step. When collecting data, we want to gather as much information as possible from as many source, um, information sources as possible. So to start, we're going to answer some of the important questions. We're going to look at um, who, where, how, when, what, and why. So for who, we were going to look at um, employees, supervisor, management, where is going to be online databases, how and when will be the methods used to collect information, what, um, what areas we want to focus on getting the information on, and then why it's so important to get this information to achieve a better understanding of the job. So we have two main sources, our human resources, so employees, people who currently hold the position, supervisor, manager, um, professionalists, job analysts, uh, subject matter experts, and then online databases that a lot of people aren't aware about, um, ONET, Occupational Information Network, and then the DOT. So there's three methods of data collection, the observation method, questionnaire, and the interview method. Observation method is exactly what